Hello guys, this is going to be a very watered down tutorial for VMD and uh, pretty much all I'm going to be covering um, is some simple mouse controls and uh, how to change certain graphics displays and uh, I'll go over some other mouse controls and this perspective and orthographic mode. Um, I'll set some perspective for now. And uh, VMD is already pretty simple and intuitive as is, but uh, I figured I might as well cover this in order to get the best out of it. So right off the bat, when you open VMD, you'll get this VMD main window, and you'll get this visualization window. Now, to add a new molecule, just go to File, New Molecule, and it'll bring up this molecule file browser. And you just click Browse, and you pick files from your existing library. And uh, so right now we're going to load in this PDB file, and we'll take a look at it. So this PDB file is the simplest file you can get. It's a structure file along with the coordinates, so you get an idea of what the molecule is right off the bat. Um, the other type of file, I'll go ahead and delete this, the other type of file we have uh, is the PSF file, which is just a structure file. It doesn't have coordinates. And as you can see, the program loaded in the PSF file, but it doesn't visualize it because it, ha it doesn't have the coordinates uh, with which you can view the molecule. So in order to make this work, you would load in what's called the DCD file. I'm going to load in the pulling DCD. And the difference between a DCD and a PDB file is that a DCD file has multiple frames and it has a lot more data. So it's essentially kind of like a movie or a lot of PDB files mashed up into one. So you can actually play this file. And watch it jiggle and you can move the speed and you can you know play it on the loop if you want. Now we're going to go back to the uh, PDB just to go over some uh, of the mouse controls real fast. So when you open VMD uh, the easiest thing everyone probably knows this right off the bat is that the left mouse button controls the rotation on all three axes so you can move it however you'd like in all directions. If you use the right mouse button however you would get a rotation on con constrained on one axis so it would be rotating like this. And another thing that's really helpful actually is if you press uh, on your keyboard right next to the backspace button there is uh, it doubles as the plus and equals sign button. You, if you click that, it returns it to the original view. So you can reset pretty much whenever you get messed up. If you if you like, oh, whoops, it's doing this, and you want to get back to normal, boom, back to normal. It's, it's the plus, it, it doubles as the plus and equals key, and it's right next to the backspace. Now the rest of the mouse controls are over here, and you would click uh, on this mouse extension here. So you would, you have translate mode, which pretty much moves it left and right and if you right click you can actually zoom in and out. The other one is the scale mode which acts as the same thing as the right mouse button does on the translate mode. I'll go back to rotation mode for now. And then the last big one is the center button. Is You can actually center or replace your center with something and when switching back to rotation mode it makes a new center so it would rotate around that center. So I set it here. Originally it was around here um, but I reset it there. And actually, another useful thing is you can label atoms, bonds, and angles. So, I mean, if you're doing a presentation especially, this is very imp important in order to show what you're looking at and, and help others visualize as well. So you can do this for atoms as I've done, and you can also do it for bonds and angles. Um, the next big thing is under graphics. Uh, when you're doing representations, sometimes you want to color things a bit differently and maybe you want to draw and show atoms instead of just bonds. So um, what you would do is you would go down, say I want to uh, show temperature instead of uh, molecule name. So instead of, right now we're in name, I would go down to beta, and this would show well, this would show the, uh, the temperature essentially of the different parts of the molecule. Let's go back to name. And you also have drawing methods, so lines, bonds, dynamic bonds, hydrogen bonds, etc. They would be able to show you the bonds uh, within within the uh, this molecule. Let me get rid of this uh, center. Oh, I'm in label, so recenter and uh, go back to rotation. I'll reset. There we go. Uh, and uh, so lines, bonds, hydrogen. Uh, bonds and such, they, they would show you the actual 
uh, they will show you the bonds and not the atoms. And if you go to uh, stuff like here, points, points actually gives you the atoms and not the bonds. While uh, CPK and Van der Waals, well, Van der Waals would give you the Van der Waals uh, radius and the influence of that atom. And CPK is pretty much what everyone is used to, which is you would see the atoms and the bonds. And here's an interesting, interesting thing about VMD is you can select different atoms. So say I only want carbon, I just type in carbon and it would give me all the carbons. Right now we have it on all, which is good enough. But if you want to view, oh, well, say there's, well, there is one sulfur in the ubiquitin molecule. So I type in sulfur, see if it recognizes that. There you go. There is the lone sulfur molecule. Let's go back to all. The last thing I want to cover is this display. So the two things I want to go over is this perspective and orthographic. So right now we're in perspective mode. And the advantage of perspective mode is it gives you a very beautiful look on what the molecule is. It gives you great depth, depth perception. And it, modify, it kind of modifies the molecule based on, on which direction you're looking at it. The problem with this is it doesn't preserve the accurate bond links. So it's not very realistic per se. You don't get a good sense on how it works. So you can change it to orthographic, which preserves bond length and gives you a very, very accurate representation, but doesn't look as good as the perspective. So normally we just keep it in perspective mode because, well, hey, I want it to look good. So thank you guys for bearing through this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. And as I said, it's a very, very watered down version uh, meant for those who just want to get through this and get, on, get going on their own. Uh, thank you. I also want to thank Alice, who is the inspiration for this. She, she had to deal with me through the summer program I was with her with. Uh, and uh, I hope this is very helpful to Alice and the lesson plan she is using this in.